Coach, how has T.J. Starks responded to the suspension, and what does he need to do to get back on the floor with you guys? Uh, he texted me on Friday. Uh, what I asked him to do was go to class, go to study hall, go to tutoring, and to text me and give me an update. I think he was suspended on a Thursday, and he texted me on Friday, so uh, a week later, and he said he had been doing all those things. Over here on the left, Rob. Howdy, Coach. Um, you uh, watching you the other night. You were working really hard on the sideline. Is that is that just showing your your team that you're going to work as hard coaching as you want them to play on the floor? We for sure need to improve in regards to um, how hard that we play. I don't know that um, my actions are the right representation for Texas A&M. I don't also think that it's sustainable to be my age and act like that. Um, but I do think that uh, at that moment in time, relative to the ambiance, relative to what was happening in the game, I thought it was the only way that I could contribute to helping our team. And so uh, we have a long way to go to be able to play as hard as we have to play. And we for sure have even further to go to be able to play as hard as you have to play on consecutive possessions. Eventually, consecutive minutes, we're not there yet. But I don't know that um, it's necessarily the right approach. But it was at that time the only thing that I felt as though I could do to help. You got uh, Owen right here on the right. Uh, yeah, Coach, a couple things. Uh, uh, update on Andre Gordon, and then uh, I wonder, is it worrisome, is it a big concern that uh, Savion and Wendell have gotten, seems like they've gotten off kind of a slow start, or is that just something to be anticipated to some degree in a new regime? Yeah, I think change is hard. Uh, no, no matter what the sport is, no matter what's transpiring in anyone's life, I think change is hard. Uh, Chuck and Savion are both as good a kids as I've been around. Uh, and I hope that the trajectory of the rest of the season is better than it has been through four games, uh, statistically. But I also hope that it's better in regards to how hard they compete. But it's for sure not just Chuck and Savion. It's Texas A&M, and that includes me at the front. We've got to figure out how we can, um, like I just mentioned, how we can play with a level of care that gives us a chance. And thus far, we haven't been able to do that in long enough stretches. And uh, it's only going to get harder relative to the competition. And that's not to be disrespectful, but this will be the this trip will be the first time that we've had to play away from Reed Arena. And so you probably will have to manufacture even more uh, emotion in order to give ourselves a chance. Dre has not practiced since the last time I saw you, and I don't know when that will change. Uh, E-Man tore up his ankle in that game. He has not practiced. Dre hasn't practiced. Uh, JJ had uh, his wisdom teeth pulled the following morning, so he hasn't practiced. Cassius hasn't practiced. So I think we've had six scholarship guys. We practiced Friday afternoon. We practiced Saturday morning. We were off yesterday, and we practiced this morning. So it was um, six scholarship guys. Zach helps a lot. French helps a lot. That put us to eight. And occasionally, Luke or Everett will sub in in some capacity. So we've done as much three-on-three three and four-on-four four as possible Saturday and Monday relative to all those kids that I just mentioned. We got Chip in the back and then Mike. Buzz, that may speak to that with the continuity, but for the most part, you guys have been much better in the second half than you have in the first half of, of your first four games. Might not should go to the locker room before the game. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just skip that part. Have you thought too. about that? <laughs> I, I do know. I looked at that. Um, Statistically, I don't know what the answer is, but you're correct. Um, we did not outscore Gonzaga in the second half, but 
Uh, it was much more of a game if you only look at the second half numbers. But we have been outscored by every opponent through four games in the first half, distinctly outscored. So I'm not sure what the answer is, but obviously we'll have to change. Um, maybe what we do in pregame, maybe what film we're watching day of the game, we need to figure that out. We got Mike over there on the left. Coach, I know you guys went to Costa Rica before the season, but this is your first actual road trip where a real game is being played. And yes, sir. Harvard's not a, a pushover by any means. They're picked to win the, the Ivy League. What can you kind of learn about your team facing a, a good team on the road and especially a good guard in Aiken, too? Yeah, I think um, Harvard will play their two best players for the first time on Thursday, just from what I've read from their media. Um, I think with both of those guys, I think they're a top 30 team. I think they can win a game and advance in the NCAA tournament. I for sure, I, I'm not familiar, I don't study the Ivy League, but I know the job that Coach Amaker has done there. Uh, time will tell, maybe the best job ever um, in the Ivy League over a long period of time. So. Uh, with both of their best players, I don't know if those two kids are NBA players, but they're they're on the fringe, if not for sure. And so we'll have to be our, at our absolute best. It'll be a completely different environment than Costa Rica for sure. We got Travis right here in the front left. Hey, Coach. Um, what, was I, the, what was the coach's name? Uh, what was the coach's name at at, at uh, Princeton? That was so good. Yeah, Coach Carrillo. I think it'll be either Amaker or Coach Carrillo. Uh, Coach, with uh, after last game, and I know you might kind of answer this with your injury update, but after last game you said you all worked really hard to find a, an offensive play that found some traction. How in this little bit of a break time has the offense developed? Um, it hasn't been able to develop because uh, we haven't been able to play five on five because we don't have enough guys. Uh, we tried a little bit on Friday. We practiced Friday afternoon. We were off on Thursday. I saw you guys on Wednesday night. So on Friday afternoon, we tried to put all the healthy guys on a team. And we played against um, three managers, uh, Luke and um, BD. So we tried to, we call them the blue team. We tried to run the new play against the blue team. Uh, it was okay. It's just it's not necessarily like a real rep, but maybe it's better than nothing. And and I think we'll try to do that maybe either tomorrow morning before we leave, possibly Wednesday morning, just so that. I mean, obviously we can't go up and down, but maybe if we could play five on five against the blue team, at least there's some level of we're all going to be on the same bench on Thursday. And just a point of clarification: Is there a timetable for TJ's return to the floor? No, sir. Go all the way in the back, put in the TV here. Coach, what what are you looking for this road trip? Um, and I guess what would you, ex I guess what are you expecting? What are you looking for to have a successful road trip this Thanksgiving? Yeah, w whether we play or whether we practice, whether it's a tournament, whether we're at home or on the road, uh, and I mean this in the right tone of voice, we just got to get to the point where we play really hard. That would be successful for me and potentially as we uh, accrue the ability to do that over a longer period of time. Maybe it would be success in the result on the scoreboard. But we've just got to get to where we, we try really hard and we play really hard and we play for one another. And uh, you can feel that emotion through the TV or you can hear that emotion through the radio. We're not there yet, but that's, that's how I judge practice. That's how I judge the first half, the second half, halftime, pregame. Are we just, is the intent of our heart all going in the same direction? And that direction is try really, really hard. And try really, really hard. If you don't know the answer to that, whatever you think I would define as really, really hard is, try that definition. We got Rob over here on the left. Have you ever experienced um, a team that's been this thin where you're having to get managers to, to practice against your No, guys. sir. But it's good. Uh, all, that, all that I've learned thus far has been 
an incredible opportunity uh, because it it uh, maybe this is the right or maybe this is the wrong way to answer it. It boils everything down really, really quick. It boils everything. Uh, the roster, the age of the roster, the injury of the rosters, the the teams that you're playing, where you're playing, uh, you're able to get to the core really, really quick. And regardless of who or what that core is, the sooner you can get there, then you know what it is. And then as a teacher, how can you help them as best as possible uh, to grow from that core? So there's not a lot of um, ang uh, accessories around what we're doing. I mean, we've, and so uh, in a demented way, I think it's a great opportunity. And how we handle that and how we grow from that, can we grow from that? Uh, and when we grow, how are we going to grow? And so, it's it's boiled down about as as quick as possible. We got Jessica over on the left, then Chip and Gabriel wraps up. Um, last week you had mentioned it might have been the worst week of practice. I think you said there was like 67 turnovers in practice. Have you seen improvement from them? And I guess how has this week been since? Then? Saturday's practice was the best effort of practice we've had. I think Saturday was our 30th practice. Um, we were off yesterday. We practiced again this morning. It wasn't as good as Saturday, but it was in that realm. Uh, the numbers that you're talking about, Monday of last week, we turned it over 67 times. Uh, most of that, not all of that, was in uh, a full court five on five situation. On Tuesday of last week, we turned it over 29 times. So that's an improvement, 29 still too high of a number. We haven't been able to monitor or measure that because we haven't been able to play five on five since then. Turnovers are still an issue even playing three on three or four on four, but uh, it's a little mitigated in that most of what we're doing is not in the full court. But it's still a priority relative to Texas A&M needs to get a shot and not give it to the other team. But I, I can't tell you the numbers just because we haven't been able to play five on five. All right, we got Chip in the back left and then Gabe. Buzz, I was going to ask you about turnovers, so I'll, I'll ask you a, a, a different question in terms of the challenge that you have with guys that you're not sure who's going to be there from day to day with the injuries you've mentioned. You, you've had a suspension. So how challenging is that to try to get some continuity with whoever you have at practice and then getting ready for a game? Yes, sir. Uh, it's a challenge. It's, it's not just a challenge for me. I think it's a challenge for the program. Um, you can't control injury. Injury is a part of sport. You can't control when they get hurt or who gets hurt or what position is hurt or how it affects your depth. I think that's just – this is kind of part of what we do. It, what it does do in a good way is Saturday and today, um, every rep – I know it's not five on five, but every rep, the healthy players are getting every single rep. And so that's good that uh, regardless of where you're at, if you're healthy, you're getting every single rep. And you hope that through those reps, improvement occurs. Um, so it's good that, I mean, they're, they're getting to play every single possession. All right, we got Gabe over here on the right to wrap us up. Hey Buzz, do you like what you're getting from Quentin Jackson right now? And where do you see him going from this point? He had his best practice today. Um, He's smarter than you would think. I don't know if he's ever talked to any of you guys. Uh, has a really good demeanor about him. Has a good spirit. I would say, just my view, he's the most likable guy on the team by his teammates. Um, this, is, this is his first rep uh, at this level. Everything, the practice, the film, the weight room, uh, the tutoring, the study hall, the competition. You, you hope that because he's had 60 games of experience at the junior college level that he's able to gain traction maybe quicker than most freshmen. Uh, I've had at least one junior college player on every team that I've coached just in honor of the fact that I'm the only Power 5 junior college coach in the country. Uh, I'm partial to JUCO guys. Uh, 
I love who Q is. We do need him to gain more consistency in his effort. Uh, statistically, we need him to be able to get fouled. He can get fouled when he drives in a straight line. And we need him to make uh, a higher percentage of his catch-shoot shots. You could say that about Texas A&M, uh, but we need that from Q. Uh, his effort on Saturday was good. His effort today was the best that he's had since he's been here. So relative to where the roster's at, uh, all of the kids' names that I haven't mentioned, in addition to Q, they're, we're going to play 600 minutes between now and a week from now. So they'll be able to play all the minutes they want. And maybe from all of the reps that they're getting, even though it's not five on five, obviously your conditioning level improves because you can't ever sub out. And um, if Q can just keep going uh, on that road that he's on after four games, that's good. Because um, we'll need that the rest of the way. Not just this year, the rest of his career will need that from him. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you.